Today my guest is Kevin Griffin. Kevin, how are you doing? Good, how are you, David? I'm doing great. It seems like you've been on my show before, but it seems like you haven't. I, I have been on your show. <laughs> this is kind of a deja vu feeling. Wasn't it DevLink last year? You no, know, we recorded some shows and I had sound uh, issues with it. Back. Yeah. And so they never were published because of the poor, it was my fault. Was it DevLink or was it Summit? I think it was CodeStock. But <laughs> or CodeStock. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we've, we've had this conversation before. Let's, uh, let's just talk about something. Yeah, that sounds good. What are we going to talk about? Uh, how about we talk uh, jQuery mobile? I'm with that. All I know right. jQuery pretty well. I've been, I've been studying jQuery a lot. I'm a huge fan. Absolutely. Even though I wasn't a huge fan of JavaScript, I always struggled with JavaScript. Well, that's what the common saying is. A lot of people's introduction to JavaScript is uh, jQuery, and that they consider themselves jQuery developers, not really JavaScript developers. And so many people spend so much time with jQuery that they really don't understand the basics of JavaScript. Mm, that's um, a danger. So uh, th there's a lot of guys out there really trying to promote JavaScript as a as a language and not really jQuery as a framework that people think is a language. Yeah. Uh, so trying to teach jQuery developers to be JavaScript developers. Sure. I mean, we have any abstraction layer has this uh, issue. But yeah. We've got to. Uh, it, it's, it helps you to get up to speed, it helps you be more efficient, uh, it helps to, in jQuery's case, it helps to get away the problems of uh, the DOM, the different the DOM implementations between the browsers, which I love. Absolutely. But it doesn't excuse you from knowing uh, the intricacies of JavaScript. JavaScript, if you know that, you'll be a better jQuery developer. Absolutely. Just like if you know HTML, HTTP, you'll be a better ASP.NET developer. Exactly. Uh, see that a lot. That abstraction seems to handcuff a number of people. Yep. Uh, so, uh, so jQuery. You said jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile. Is that distinct? Is that a different download? It's, it's a. It <laughs> is. It's very uh, distinctive from uh, jQuery as we know it. So it's the relatively the same team uh, working on it. And what jQuery Mobile tries to s solve is a uh, one singular problem. Let's take a step back and let's look at what the problem jQuery solved. We okay. we had multiple uh, browsers out there. We had IE. We had Firefox. We had Chrome, Safari. And a couple others. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and all of them had different implementations um, that we could use on uh, for JavaScript. Uh, so I could do one thing in IE that may or may not work in Firefox, uh, and may not work in Chrome, uh, or the vice versa. Something we see we see this all the time. It only works in Chrome, or it only works in Firefox. Yeah, and that might be and a feature that's not available, or it might be a feature that's available, but the syntax for calling that feature in the DOM is yeah. different. Or if I go to load a page optimized for for Chrome in IE, IE will just break, um, right. and that support's getting better with with time. Uh, well, now let's look at mobile devices. We have the same problem. I have uh, right here. I have an iPad and a Windows Phone device. Mm -hmm. um, I used to carry a Droid. Uh, a lot of people around here carry Droids. A couple people have Blackberries and uh, whatnot. They're all running different mobile browsers. They all face the same problem that we did with desktop browsers. They all run different uh, mobile web browsers, and they one thing could work on a an iOS device right. that might not work on a Windows Phone, mm -hmm. uh, just in the web browser. So what jQuery Mobile tries to solve is I can write one set of markup that works across all mobile devices, all touch-based mobile devices uh, with relative ease. Okay. Uh, so I can give you an example. Please. So here I have an iPad. Let me bring it up. So this is the jQuery mobile document page running on an iPad. What's the URL? Uh, the URL, just go to jQuerymobile.com. Uh, the, the actual jQuery mobile website itself is not mobile, but if you go to the document page, that is mobile enabled. So this is the page we're looking at right here. And the first thing that you'll notice is that it's very friendly to the mobile uh, platform. So I have nice big buttons for big fat fingered people. I can go to any section and I can tap on it. It brings up a little loading dialog and it goes to another page with more big touch enabled features. This is very easy to read on a mobile device. It also gives me built-in uh, headers and footers. Uh, here is an example of a header. So it gives me buttons up at the top so I can easily go home 
I don't have to rely on my browser's home button or back or forward buttons. Uh, as a developer, I can program, program those directly into the web page itself. Let me find a example of the header and footer. All right, so this is an example using a header and footer. Uh, the page header up here at the top, I can put whatever I wanted to in here. And it keeps you to a little bit of a, a template. So for any header, I can have a text in the middle, a page title, whatever I want. Uh, normally with mobile websites, you don't have a title at the title bar because there is no title bar. Um, I can also put buttons on either the left or right side. So if I want to put a, an options button on the right side, I can. I can put a home button over here on the left side. It gives me full flexibility for that. And then I can also put a footer down at the bottom. So if I want to put uh, maybe a new, save, open, common website functions, they can go in the footer uh, without any issues. Let me go back here to the, the home page and show you this is it running on an iPad. Now let me show you running it on a Windows Phone 7. The, this is the same website that I just showed on the iPad running on a Windows Phone 7. And because the screen is a little bit smaller, it has to make take some, uh, some methods for moving the data around to present it for a smaller form factor. So one of the things it did was it took all the content that was on the, the right hand column for the iPad and just moved it below all the content that was on the left side. So when I scroll down this website, it looks like it was made for this phone in particular. Although it's the same markup. It's jQuery Mobile that's doing all the work in the background. So one page, I have two different view options depending on what mobile device I'm using. Well, that was a cool demo, and I like the fact that you, you the form, it took into account the form factor. This iPad is a lot bigger than this Windows Phone 7, mm -hmm. and therefore it, it uh, turned a two-column layout into one column. It compensates yes. that. But that's not the only difference between this browser and this browser. This is running Safari, and that's running IE. It is. So they have different dominant limitations. How it, does it take that into account it, as well? It does. Uh, so uh, jQuery Mobile has three, but technically four levels of support for mobile devices. Uh, they have uh, Class A, Class B, and Class C, and then not supported. Uh, the, just recently with the Beta 1 and Beta 2, it might even be a little further back. Uh, I, I just don't remember. We're on Beta 2 right now. Okay. Uh, they now have full Class A support for Windows Phone 7. Uh, iOS and Android have been supported from the very beginning, uh, full Class A support. Uh, what Class A support means is you get, you get everything. Uh, so full uh, Ajax page transitions. Um, I didn't show any of the examples with sliding pages in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea is if, I, if I'm using uh, an iPad, I'm used to transition. So if I'm going from one page to another, it's not a, just a new page appears or a new app appears. Uh, one app goes out, another app comes in. So there's that actual movement of data that shows me that it's doing something, that the context is changing. jQuery Mobile does the same thing but with web pages. So if you're using a, just a regular website that's not mobile enabled, if I click on a link, the page goes blank and then renders with new content. In jQuery Mobile, if I click on a link, it will actually transition from one page to another. Uh, you can control whether it's a slide in, maybe a, um, a slide in, slide out, a slide up, slide down. There's a couple different ones. Or you can have it uh, just uh, load a J, an Ajax style loading page. Uh, oh, there's this kind of graceful degradation. Yeah. You can't implement the feature in the way that it's ideally implemented. You'll come up with something similar that works it does. Well, as well as can be done. So you won't have the exact same experience on the iOS as you do on the Windows Phone, okay. but the, the actual rendering itself is very, very close. Okay. Uh, so if it knows it's running on a Windows Phone 7, there are going to be certain little things you don't get, but everything's going to work in the end. Okay, it won't um, just break if you try something. Absolutely. 
best feature for jQuery mobile to really talk about is that there's no JavaScript required. So mm -hmm. it, it's, what do you mean? So everything in jQuery mobile, not, well not everything, most of what you're going to do in jQuery mobile is going to be markup based. Really? Uh, so uh, the key word that people throw around is unobtrusive. Okay. So it's, I don't want to write JavaScript to do, to just maybe set a, a button as a button. I should just be able to mark it as a, a data um, annotation. Okay. Say, uh, this button's role is a button. So jQuery Mobile will go look for anything that's marked as a button and turn it into a button. Okay. But when I'm building markup, I can say, I can take a link, just a standard uh, a, um, a tag, uh, hyperlink, tag, yeah. and say data dash role is equal to button. You said say that uh, you were adding that as an attribute? It's to added to an tag? attribute to the anchor tag. Okay, so I'm writing HTML yep. and I'm adding some extra attributes that HTML doesn't know about, but the jQuery Well, HTML5 has full support. That's the one of the things with HTML5 is the data dash attributes. Oh, okay. All right. So anything that says data dash is a valid HTML5 uh, attribute. Okay. Um, so if I go data dash role, I can say this is a mobile page, this is my header, my footer, uh, the, the list goes on. Okay. Uh, and when jQuery mobile renders the site, it goes through and looks for those data um, annotations. And when it finds one, it recognizes it goes and do, does something with it. So the end result is I have a fully marked up page that works across multiple devices with no JavaScript. Okay. Is there so there's no script tag at the top with a dollar sign and a selector? So the only oh, no the, the only thing you do is you uh, you have a script tag that links to the jQuery mobile uh, JavaScript oh, okay. script file. All right. So and once you've done that and you bring in the, their CSS also for styling, okay, uh, you're you're good to go. It's something it's sufficient simply to link to that script file. That script file has something that's always going to run. Yes. Have firing up on yeah. So they do have an API uh, in addition to. Uh, so you can write script if you want to. You can. Uh, I haven't spent too much time with the API uh, because I haven't. It I've been had to. to. Uh, the level of flexibility that is offered with jQuery Mobile, I haven't had to take advantage of it yet. But the flexibility is there, and it's getting better day by day. Okay. Uh, anyone that's familiar with uh, jQuery and jQuery UI also know that. Um, jQuery UI is heavily themable, so they right. have a, a tool called Theme Roller, and they can you can go in and design your own themes and and whatnot. jQuery Mobile does not support Theme Roller yet. Uh, when they have their 1.0 release here, hopefully in the next couple months, I'm not sure what their immediate timeline is. Mm -hmm. uh, they're promising to have a Theme Roller tool just for mobile sites. Nice. Uh, but out of the box, you get five themes. So there's a they're they're named really well A B C D and E, and I'm a C man myself. So yes, <laughs> but they're very high contrast uh, themes. That easy to see on a small screen. If you're ever out in a very sunny right. atmosphere, it's very difficult to see websites that are on white backgrounds okay. because they bleed through. But on jQuery Mobile, the buttons just pop. You can read the text. Okay. The the colors are well for a mobile device, and. So you have the, your five themes, uh, with 1.0 you'll get Theme Roller. So if you already have an existing site that uses Theme Roller, your mobile site should look exactly the same using this. I don't know if it's going to be the same Theme Roller files or a, a not spin off of them. Okay. Um, they haven't, I haven't seen any information on that. Okay. Uh, doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but hopefully that's the way things are going to work. So there's documentation on jQueryMobile.com. Yes, documentation of great documentation. How to use it and also the API. Uh, where else can people go to learn about this? Uh, I would say the best resource is jQueryMobile.com. Okay. Um, I'm, I haven't done any blog entries or anything on it yet. Yes, uh, so, uh, my <laughs> you, session today, speaking out, yeah, yeah. I'm speaking on it today here at DevLink. Uh -huh. uh, I am planning on recording my session. Sure. So as long as the recording comes out well and I don't screw anything up too badly, uh, it will be on my website uh, within a couple weeks. And your website is? Uh, so my website is at uh, kevgriffin.com, K-E-V-G-R-I-F-F-I-N. 
Uh, I also have a blog with Component One. Uh, go to a or r dot component one dot com. That's r is a o u r dot okay. yeah r uh, dot component one dot com. Uh, I have a blog up there too. So I sometimes I cross link between them. It, it just depends. Right. So I'm also on Twitter uh, at one the number one Kev Griff K E V G R I F F, um, and that's really the best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter. All right. Anything else? No, that's uh, come to DevLink next year. I'm sorry you're not here. <laughs> Probably but, here. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, All right, thanks Dave. a lot. It's awesome. been a pleasure.